This next story is actually the experience of a female friend. Here's her story as it was told to me. I've never had anything like this happen before. This morning, I woke up and sent a text to my best friend Anna, asking if she wanted to go shopping and have lunch since it was my first day off in about two weeks. Not waiting for a text back, I got into the shower and started doing the usual shower routine. After about 10 minutes or so, I faintly hear the phone ring. Probably Anna. It stops ringing after two or three rings. I finally get out of the shower and first thing I do is check my phone. There are no missed calls, but there's a text message. I thought it was odd because my phone was definitely ringing as though someone was calling. When someone texts my phone, it just makes a little ping noise, not a full ringing sound. I checked the message, from my mom by the way, and what it said made my blood run cold. This is exactly what the text message said. Hey sweetie, just wanted to make sure you were okay. Your boyfriend said you were in the shower and he'd let you know to call me back. Have to run into a meeting so I won't be able to answer. Call me back later and thanks for letting me know you had a boyfriend, lol. After reading the message from my mom, I threw on clothes and drove as fast as I could to another friend's house. I don't have a boyfriend and I live alone. Someone was in my house, answered my phone and spoke to my mother. I know everyone will tell me to call the cops and I already did. They searched my apartment and found nothing. No random man under the bed or in my closet. No signs of forced entry. All the windows were locked as always. Nothing. I don't know how this person got into my house or why he thought it was a good idea to answer my phone, but I'm too scared to go home. I'm staying with my friend now. I don't know what to do. Life was good, and I had just finished medical school and was about to begin my decently paying job as a paramedic. I was happy. Life had finally presented great opportunities, and I intended to take advantage. We had to undergo intense training along with countless hours of studying human anatomy, but as of last month, I was officially named a paramedic of Westbrook County. Scheduled to start the next day, I was unable to sleep, relishing in the fact that I had finally done it. Excitement laced every word I spoke as I reported in ready for my first day on the job. I worked in a small crew of four, and over the time we spent together training, we became considerably close as friends. It was around 10 a.m. that we got our first official call. It was from a worried neighbor. She said her neighbor, Mrs. Carter, was an old widow with a history of health problems. She was worried something may have happened to her, possibly a serious injury, seeing as she hadn't left her house for over a week. After the information and address were relayed to us, my crew and I were dispatched. We were accompanied by two officers in the case of a crime. Our driving brought us across town to a small, rural neighborhood. We pulled up to the little house and were greeted by the distressed neighbor. We loaded out all the necessary tools and approached the door. After a few knocks and multiple bangs, all without a reply from the inside, the officers kicked in the door with one solid kick. The horrible fragrance attacked our nostrils as the door flew open, causing a few of us to gag. We walked inside, calling her name, our shoes clacking on the smooth tile. We walked slowly, and we turned the corner to enter the dining room. The smell intensified as Miss Carter lay on the floor. She let out desperate moans as she saw us approach. The mangled flesh clung to her gnawed arms, chunks of flesh missing all around her body. We approached her, wondering who would do this. But upon further inspection, it was revealed that these wounds were self-inflicted. Out of desperation, Miss Carter had partially eaten herself, for she was unable to reach any food or water from her fallen position. As we attempted to lift her onto the stretcher, I noted the dried, crusted flesh dug under her nails, 
and dry blood around her mouth. She forced us to restrain her as she still attempted to chew on the hanging flesh. We loaded her into the ambulance, heading back to the hospital. On the way back, the officers gave the officer report. He explained, saying that Mrs. Carter had fallen with no assistance to get up, possibly laying there for over a week. She desperately resulted to eating parts of herself. It was by far the most gut-wrenching experience I have ever had. It had been a long day. I was ready for sleep. I craved the way my bed cradled every inch of my body and the comforting, warm weight of my blanket. I felt cumbersome and lethargic. Even thinking hurt at this point. No way was I pulling another all-night study session. I was getting some sleep tonight. My daughter had gone to bed relatively easy, which was a blessing. She didn't cry about any monsters under her bed or the shadow man in the corner of her room. She just cuddled beneath her hundreds of stuffed animals and passed out. It was almost as if the weeks of nightmares never happened, and I was glad for that. Maybe she'd stay in her own bed this time, and I could get a full night's worth of sleep. I went to my room and just dropped into my bed face down with the lights off. As each muscle relaxed, I groaned. It could have been painful if it hadn't felt so good. I shimmied up like a worm until my head touched my pillow and kicked off my shoes before wrapping myself up in my heavy comforter. I could already feel myself drifting off, my body tingling and my thoughts becoming more muddled until, finally, blissful nothingness consumed me. My eyes opened what felt like only a few moments later. Groggily, I checked the time. 2.30 in the morning. I had been asleep for three hours. I groaned and closed my eyes, trying to fall back into my near-death slumber, but I found that I couldn't. I felt like something was watching me. My eyes shot open again and my heart kicked up a notch. I noticed some movement at the doorway. With a heavy sigh, I relaxed myself. In the gloom, I could see my daughter standing in the doorway, clutching a small, stuffed bear to her chest. She must have had another nightmare. Alina, come on, you can sleep with me, honey. I called out, my voice thick with sleep, as I threw back the covers for her. Just as the little shadowed figure started to near my bed, I heard my daughter's terrified voice quivering behind me. Mommy, that's not me. For those of you unfamiliar, Snapchat is a messaging app that allows users to send pictures and videos for up to 10 seconds to each other. It's a lot of fun and is something I use on a regular basis. Once the photo was viewed, you can't look at it again unless you screenshot the image. It was starting to get late. I was bored out of my mind and watching Netflix and I needed something to do. I had the brilliant idea of going on Omegle. Of course this led to a lot of naked men and porn ads. I was about to go find another distraction when I finally found a normal match on Omegle. It was a dark room with a cute looking young woman sitting in front of her webcam. I figured it was a fake and was going to be a screamer or some prank. After an awkward silence, I was about to click next when she said hello. Immediately following that was the text. Hit me up on Snapchat, Sasha247. I pulled out my phone and added her just for the hell of it. Right as I added her, she disconnected. I sent a snap saying, what's up? I was just on Omegle and proceeded to wait. It was around 1.30 in the morning now, and I went back to watching Netflix. At 2 a.m., I got a reply. It was her. It was a picture of her car, followed by the text, I'm on my way, baby. I simply responded with, Be safe, lol. I then fell asleep. The next day, I wake to my phone and discover the horror, opening one snap at a time. The first is of her driving. 
a little weird, but I don't think much of it. Then it started to get real. I got more snaps of her driving. One had her at a stoplight. I noticed a Walmart next door to a gem. The very same Walmart and gem just a few minutes away from my house. So at this point, I'm about ready to crap myself. I don't know what really to do. I open another snap of her entering my neighborhood, accompanied with the text, Get ready. I quickly open the next message to find what appears to be a picture of the front of my house at night. The message fades and I quickly tap the final message. It is a 10 second video of me taken through the living room window asleep on the couch in front of the TV. I've never been so creeped out in my life. I immediately notified the police. It's 5 a.m. I'm about to pass out and my eyes are gradually getting heavier, but the sight of my girlfriend's face on Skype keeps me fighting to stay awake. We have been Skyping every night for the past three months. Long distance is a bitch, but I love her and I can't wait to hold her in my arms again. My eyes collapse for a mere moment. Babe, you're tired, get some sleep. I spring up. No, it's all good. I'm going to go make some coffee. I'll be right back. I left my screen illuminating in the dark room. I make my way down the stairs into my kitchen where the kettle naturally belongs. I make my coffee and head back to the computer. I was greeted by the warm smile that I grew fond of. Welcome back, you macho man. My pet name. Hey, sexy, I replied. We always have this moment where we stare blankly at each other, like any normal couple would do. It was another sleepless, perfect night. That is, until my phone went off. As I make my way to reach my phone, I thought to myself, I wonder who it could be calling me at this hour. Could it be just my friend calling, wanting to chat? Do they need a place to crash? Or could it just be a wrong number? I looked at my phone. I froze. It was my girlfriend. I quickly shifted my eyes back to the computer monitor to see if she was playing a trick on me, but she just sat there, hands folded on her desk with that familiar grin. Maybe she butt-dialed me or something, I thought. I answered. I heard an eerily, all-too-familiar voice on the other side. Hey babe, I'm sorry. I know it's really late. I just got home from Morgan's party. Are you awake? My body became solid with fear. My eyes shifted upward to my horror to see my girlfriend staring back at me. Who are you? I yelped in terror. What do you mean, sweetie? Her eyes became black as her voice became deeper. It's me. I placed my phone to my ear again. I tried to yell out to her, don't go in your room. But the fear... The fear held my tongue with a tight grip. Babe, don't. I whimpered. What did you say, babe? Sorry, I'm unlocking my door and I couldn't hear you. I sit in horror as the creature that took the form of my girlfriend sheds this bone-chilling, menacing grin and turns its head to one side. I hear her open the door. Both calls end abruptly. Hey everyone, if you've made it this far, I want to say thank you so much for watching my videos. If you want to be kept up to date as to when I post new ones, you can hit the subscribe button and it will let you know when I post new ones. Also, don't forget to like. Um, if you have any stories you'd like for me to narrate for you and put to video, I'd be more than happy to do so. You can send those to drhorrorstories at gmail.com. Sleep well.